I've had a few parcels and gifts accumulating for the last couple of weeks, so I thought I'd have a go at one of these mailbag videos. Um, we'll save that one till later, and we'll start off with this one. First of all, we have... This one's from Protopic, and uh, paid for this one. So what we've got in here is an electric imp 002 model, which has got more inputs and outputs than the original electric imp. Which, um, that's my original one. There we go. So here's the original came in an SD card format. And uh, I've recently been doing some work on my electric imp greenhouse monitoring setup. And I decided I wanted something with a few more inputs and outputs. So I got myself one of these. And then about the day after I ordered it, Plotly, the service I'm using for doing all my graphing, is no longer talking to my old code for some reason. Um, my code hasn't changed, so maybe the electric imp libraries have changed. Or um, Plotly have changed something in their API. But I'll be having a play with this one another time. So second up we've got a parcel from Hong Kong and I think I know what this one is. So this should be, here we go, inside here we've got the Ublox Neo 8 M8N which is the uh, Top end version of these little U Blocks GPS modules. Um, I saw Julian Illit did an excellent video on these, and then David Watts did another excellent video on a slightly different model. So um, there wasn't much difference in the price, so I thought I'd go for the one that can, uh, I believe from Julian's video, receive both the Russian GLONASS satellite net network and the US satellite network simultaneously for a higher accuracy fix and a faster time to fix. I'm going to have a play with that one in a minute or two. So I've been having a little play with this M8N U-Blox module. Um, I don't have a 3.3 volt USB serial dongle so I've had to hook it up through a voltage converter and a level shift converter. But it seems to be working fine. You'll have to accept my apologies for recording the screen here but here we have the U-Blox U-Center software that they give away free on their website and uh, I just wanted to confirm that it does in fact record both Russian and US satellites simultaneously and these are the Russian ones, the GLONASS ones you can see it receiving a signal from them and using it in combination with the US ones and I've also spotted a few Chinese satellites show up on this list as well and uh, on this Google Earth view, this I do not live at the end of a runway I've uh, offset the coordinates bit uh, not a million miles away from me, but that's not my house. And uh, you can see we're getting very, very good positional stability there. And uh, actually it gives us a deviation view. Where's that hiding? There we go. So if I zoom in on this, and we're up to... There we go. Within two metres there, but we're slowly tracking our position around a bit there. Not 100% certain, not quite warmed up yet, I don't think. And we can see the uh, theoretical movement on our Google map as well, as we kind of wander slightly around the runway there. So, that all works as advertised. Receives both satellite networks at once. Right, time for the next toy. Parcel number three has come to me from China by the looks of it and it says Banggood on it though I didn't realise I'd ordered from them. So inside here we have a hundred pieces of nickel. Um, I got these for making battery packs with I kind of got fed up with using copper slug tape for connecting my batteries together so I thought I'd get some actual proper strips of nickel to play around with. Parcel number five wedged in there. Oh, they did a good job fitting this in. It's a sheet of copper, one mil thick copper. Um, 
that goes along with we've got a sheet of zinc and of course zinc and copper go together to make batteries and um, I'm going to have a go in a month or so's time at making a little circuit right from the batteries up with my young son. So the other items I've got this was a present from someone at work so thank you very much John T and he's given me a Node MCU to play around with. This is one of those ESP2866 Wi-Fi things. Um, so I'm going to have a play around with that and see what it can do for me. And last up, thank you Colin, I've got this PowerUp 3.0 Smartphone Control Paper Aeroplane Conversion Kit. So let's have a look inside here. manuals, folded paper plane, USB cable and the actual motor and engine for this thing. Do it without breaking it. So we've got a battery and some brains up at this end, a little uh, Bluetooth antenna and at the back end we've got a little mobile phone vibration motor and we've got some sort of assembly there that acts as the rudder. Let's give that a try. So before we plug this thing in, let's pull it to pieces. And um, this little tiny screwdriver that came in a Christmas cracker happens to be a perfect fit for the little tiny screw holes on this. Okay, so down at the bottom we've got the wires that run down the shaft to the motor and the rudder. Four wires there all together. We've got a little tiny lithium ion battery, 75 milliamp power. Woohoo! And we've got our main circuit board on the top. I don't know if the camera can focus on this. We've got a chip that says CCS2541 and having already looked it up it's a Texas Instruments system on chip, 8051 CPU, uh, 128 or 256k flash, 8k of RAM and all the Bluetooth gubbins built in so you don't need to worry about that and uh, that's pretty much all we've got on the top of the board on the bottom of the board we've got I can't actually read those numbers but I presume these are Darlington drivers or something along those lines <coughs> driving the current to the motor and the rudder coils and that's about all we've got so I'll put that back together now and see if I can make it work okay so I've installed the app on my phone and we'll um, turn it on get a little white light flashing white light it's got to be a good sign it says connecting on my phone oh, oh we've got sound effects uh, I think we can do the throttle that way and I believe if we tilt the phone we do the rudder control so what I need to do now is fold a paper aeroplane and attach it to it and I think the paper aeroplanes have to be folded to a very specific design and this is one that Colin prepared earlier so I'm going to read the instructions now which are quite plentiful and um, I'll see if I can get something that will fly see how far it will fly so this thing definitely has some thrust behind it because um, she's away until she hits the box try that again I think I'll have to come back and visit this another time because the field where you fly should be at least 500 feet by 500 feet. I'm going to need a bigger house. Now we've got one last late entrance that um, I'm going to try and squeeze a little bit into this video. Can we tell what it is yet? Go to the tripod. So 
the last one is the label should give it away there we go i think i'll stop there cheers folks see you next time